This video is brought to you by Brilliant. This is my home studio desk setup, an untypical, asymmetrical, jam-packed end of 2022 iteration. In this video, I will take you on a tour of it by going through most of the items I use and sharing what I like and don't like about each one. Of course, all the links will be in the description below, so let's get to it. Starting with the autonomous desk and the first negative aspect of it, the fact that it no longer works. I bet you didn't expect that. I'm honestly not sure what happened, but it initially stopped wanting to go up and down and now it doesn't even want to power up. Truth be told, this desk has been through a lot, including the white tabletop, which to this day looks very decent for the most part. I'm especially keen on the cable tray that Autonomous sent over last time, plus I've outgrown it. I can barely fit all the gear I use, hence the asymmetrical layout, and I'm convinced that the next desk here will surely come with a cable tray, casters that I updated this one to recently, and a larger tabletop. Until I find a replacement, I will use this standing desk sitting. On top of the tabletop, the piece de resistance is the Palolo setup cockpit shelf in American oak finish. I opted for the floating laptop dock, a MagSafe iPhone charger, cable organizers, tray and catch-all trays. If you want to know more about this awesome Palolo shelf and some other desk setup goodies and accessories, be sure to check out my desk setup essentials guide video which I'll link at the end of this one. All Balolo products are great. If I could wish for something more, it will be for Balolo to create tabletops and cable trays to match their current line of products and use them with standing desk legs. Maybe they'll think in that direction in the future. My workhorse is the 16-inch M1 Max MacBook Pro, which is now a one-off machine since I accidentally dropped it from this very desk. Now I get to enjoy a nasty dent, but luckily it still works great. This M1 Max 32GB configuration with 2TB of SSD internal storage is not enough for my needs. Nevertheless, I love this computer and if you want to learn more about my experience with it, I'll leave a link to my dedicated review while well, the laptop looks pristine and undamaged. Honestly, at this point, the damage is the only thing that I don't like about it. Right next to the MacBook Pro, I keep my Nintendo Switch. This is not the OLED version and I keep it there because it's easy for me to grab it and throw it in my backpack, although I did start playing on it on the primary monitor recently. Right now I'm struggling with Metroid Dread and I wish there was a handheld light OLED Switch version with perhaps a tad bigger screen. By the way, if you end up enjoying this video, subscribe because why not? Next is the Pitaka Mac Easy iPad stand, which I use to prop up my iPad. This iPad stand has seen plenty of desk setups and I always go back to it at some point in time. It has a built-in wireless charger on the bottom, but I'm not using it this time around since I already have one on the shelf, plus I wanted to avoid having to run yet another cable. If you are interested to know how I attach the iPad to the stand, you can check out my recent favorites 2022 accessories video, which I'll link below. The first monitor that I want to show you is the 32 inch LG 32UL950-W. I called this monitor an XDR on a budget last time I reviewed it because it's the same size as the XDR display and has thin and even bezels all around. It's a 4K IPS panel that runs at 60 Hz and has all the ports required including Thunderbolt 3 and Daisy Chain. It outputs 60 watts of power yet I don't use it to charge the MacBook since I run both displays through a hub. For those wondering the wallpapers I chose for this setup are from my Blurred Lines version 2 collection which I'll also link below. If there's one thing that I don't like about this monitor it is the OEM stand. It takes too much real estate and I see why LG is moving towards more products with the built-in ergo stands. I'll show you what I'm talking about in a second. To keep this monitor floating and taking as little space as possible, I've propped it on my favorite heavy-duty Ergotron arm. This is a very expensive arm and I'm not too fond of the fact that it doesn't have a mounting VESA plate that I can easily clip into place once installed on the monitor, making the entire setup a bit cumbersome for one person. Still, it is a very well-built product that can carry the heaviest of monitors, including massive ultra-wides. Again, all the links will be in the description. The newest monitor on this setup is the newest addition in the studio, actually. It is a monitor like no other, and it's called LG 
dual up. I will be releasing a separate video about this unicorn of a display in an upcoming monitor guide update episode, but in the meantime, let me quickly introduce you to it. It is an SD QHD monitor with a resolution of 2560 by 2880. It provides a 60 Hz refresh rate, HDR10 support, 300 nits of brightness, and 98% DCI-P3 color representation. Moreover, it has ports galore and a proper 90 watt output to charge a laptop. Also, it comes with LG's Ergo stand, which is just incredible. I can move it around and adjust it one-handed, and it is now my new favorite vertical content display. Overall, great display. The entire setup is run with the help of my trusty OWC Thunderbolt dock. With three Thunderbolt 4 ports, four USB ports, Ethernet, audio, and a card reader, there isn't much more to ask for, except for maybe having the next laptop port kept on the back for a much cleaner front look. I use double-sided Velcro tape to stick it underneath the Balolo tray. In terms of speakers, I am back to my trusty Kanto YU2 powered speakers. Given my tabletop constraints, I have created a very unique layout. As you can see, one speaker is vertically positioned on its own stand and the second is horizontally placed on top of an acoustic foam. This of course is not an optimal setup, but for 90% of the work, it does the job just fine. In my dedicated Kanto video, I talked about how much I love those speakers and how they lack bass. So yeah, that's one thing missing here. On top of the primary LG monitor, I've placed my beloved BenQ screen bar Halo. Aside from projecting light to the tabletop, this light bar also emits a light glow on the back for that ambient look. Packed with features like temperature and brightness control, ambient light sensor, attachment for placing it on curved displays and much more, it is a product I give two thumbs up for. The rotating control knob is the most sophisticated one I've seen on a light bar and if I were to oppose something it would be the fact that it's not black or white but I'm nitpicking here it's a fantastic product. Next is the Elgato Stream Deck V2 which I use to control the studio lights and display custom shortcuts for my video editing program Final Cut Pro. I don't like that the buttons shift in color when looking at them from an angle and the positioning of the stand could be more optimal but it does the job. Next up is my own product, the Enough Mousepad. I won't go into details about it since you can watch the introductory video on the product page. Still, I'll use the opportunity to invite you for a giveaway of two Enough Mousepads. If you want to win one, all you have to do is leave a like or dislike on this video and drop a comment below telling me which is your keyboard of choice and why. In the first week of 2023, right before my birthday, I will announce two winners on my social media channels. If you want to double your chances to win, head over to my office studio desk setup video where I have a different question for you. I'll leave a link to it at the end of this video. Now, if I have to diss my own product, it will be the inevitable fabric balls that might form after prolonged use, but there's a fix for them a nail clipper. The keyboard of choice for this setup is the IQ Unix ZX75 Gravity Wave model. I love that it has a 6000 mAh extended battery and my favorite tactile media control knob that I can use to control the volume. I wish this keyboard was less chunky in terms of casing, yet in terms of satisfaction, excellent. Too close, a little too close. On my shelf, I also keep a magic keyboard, which I call the glorified Touch ID button. Yes, Touch ID matters that much to me, and yes, I keep a second keyboard for those charging the primary keyboard moments and when I need to authenticate something, which happens very often. If you want to know what I don't like about the magic keyboard, you can check out my office desk setup, where I use yet another magic keyboard as an authenticator. My mouse of choice for this setup is the MX Master 3S mouse. It is a heavy mouse with plenty of customization options and whisper quiet buttons. It is very comfortable for my hand and if there's one thing to complain about, it is the weight. I also use the magic trackpad with the mouse for grabbing, scrolling and moving between desktop situation. Honestly, it's a trackpad that I can't really complain about. No matter how perfect your desk setup is and how captivated you are by your work, we all need a break every once in a while to learn something new and to have a little fun. And Brilliant is a great place to do just that. It offers bite-sized lessons in math, science and computer science that you can enjoy from the comfort of your couch. One of my favorite courses that I took recently was scientific thinking. It shows you that everything around us is a puzzle. From structure like pulleys and gears, to heat flow and buoyancy, it gives you a new perspective on problem solving. They literally used a dog playing fetch to illustrate the principles of light bending, which also explains how fiber optic cables work. I thought it was an ingenious yet really fun approach. And scientific thinking is just one of the thousands of lessons available on Brilliant. Brilliant adds new content every month to keep those brain cells 
challenged and entertained. To get started with Brilliant for free, visit brilliant.org forward slash this is E or click on the first link in the description below. The first 200 of you will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. If you enjoyed this video, you should definitely check out my office desk setup as well as my desk setup guide episodes. Like and subscribe to the channel as well as my newsletter. And as always, it's been an absolute pleasure. This is E, over and out.